Yeah, 53-man roster. Let's talk about it. Um, we have the guys. We know the positions. I think we can get right into it and honestly start out with the quarterbacks because that's how you do it. We got quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers to start it out, but we'll go slowly. Quarterbacks first. We got three. We're rocking with three. You know, you can do two or three here. We have Daniel Jones, Tyrod Taylor, and Davis Webb, just what they have right now. Um, I mentioned earlier in the episode about those other guys, but yeah, Daniel Jones, we know that. They didn't pick up the fifth-year option, so this is really his prove-it year. Then you got Tyrod Taylor coming in from free agency. Same thing with Davis Webb. He was signed. The guy from the Buffalo Bills was on the Giants uh, team a few years ago. So uh, Brian Dable knows him. Shane knows him. All the other Buffalo Bills guys that we brought in here know him. Um, and that's why I'm sure he was brought in. That's the quarterbacks we're starting with here. And that's a little stuff I have about them. All right. So now we're going to the running back position, Josh. And I kind of uh discussed this one for a while we weren't sure whether to go with three whether to go with four we ended up going with four but a little bit of a twist at the end we'll get to it there Saquon Barkley will be uh the first running back obviously we all know Saquon don't need to talk about him Matt Breida the acquisition from the Buffalo Bills uh in free agency was at Buffalo was in San Francisco for a bit the speedster can do stuff out of the backfield had a quite a few nice games for the Buffalo Bills last season in that three-man rotation along with Zach Moss and Devin Singletary. Gary Brightwell, uh, our pick from last year, who will be continuing with us, obviously had a decent impact on special teams, and he's pretty much one of our only mainly focused or mainly special team focused players on this roster. And then another one here, Jeremiah Hall uh, at fullback for the Giants, and we are going to have a fullback. Brian Dable said he wanted to carry a fullback, so we are going to have a fullback and that's going to be Jeremiah Hall. He can also play a little bit of tight end, which we'll get to later. Um, and, you know, I think overall he is a, a a nice chess piece to move around on this offense. Yeah, I mean, you're right, Alex. And um, I, don't, I don't know because I put a question from the Giant Take um, Twitter account, and you can definitely go follow that at the Giant Take pod, about the running back position because it's just a little – little weak in my opinion compared to other positions on this you know on this roster and obviously you can't really address everything especially if you're a rebuilding team like the Giants it, it, you know not everything's going to be filled this year and I understand that but I don't know do they need to add one more piece Brita is your backup take one as your starter he's injury prone I don't know something to think of but for right now we can go on to the wide receivers and for this I guess they can go anywhere from like seven to nine guys, six to nine guys. We have seven. Um, and those are your main three. Let's start out with your main or main four at that point. Kenny Galladay, Sterling Shepard, Kadarius Tony, Wandell Robinson. I feel like those are guarantees. If one of those guys isn't on the team, probably because he got traded, you know. I, got... I think differently from you. I think it's five guys, but we can get to that in a second, but. I know you, yeah. you You have a different feeling about a certain individual. Me and every other Giants fan besides you, basically. Mm -hmm. And that is with the man Darius Slayton. And we have him on here at, on the roster along with two other guys. We can get to that later. But Slayton, the thing is, he's not – you think it's a guarantee? I I do not believe it's a guarantee. There's other guys. There's so many wide receivers in, in free agency that we could trade for as well as on the roster 90-man right now. There are David Sills, there's CJ Board, um, there, there's Richie James, there's a couple other guys as well that has have been up and down from the practice squad. You're spoiling uh, repeatedly. the other ones we have. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, fine. <laughs> Richie James from the San Francisco 49ers who came is also a special teams guy, return specialist on punt returns, and also CJ Board. Yeah, That's who the other guys yeah, those are, are enough, Those are two other guys who are uh, special teamers too in some sense. I don't see how you'd possibly have David Sills. I know there's David Sills Army or whatever Sills Army, but there's no way you could have David Sills over Darius Slayton. Darius Slayton, I think people have a little bit of recency bias here. His first two years were phenomenal in terms of his expectations. Compared, Not phenomenal. Compared to his expect, he was a fifth round pick. He was a fifth round pick. This first year, he did great with Daniel Jones. And arguably, in his, in his first and second years, he was our best receiver. He was our best receiver in those two years. So I, I maybe bar Golden Tate in that first year. Ah, uh, 
I found the other guys. Uh, it's um, Colin Johnson, who was on the team, actually played a significant amount last year with all our wide receivers oh injuries. God, it's like our first string probably at one point during the season. <laughs> and also Alex Bachman as well. Yeah, so um, I, I don't understand the Darius Slayton disrespect. I get it. He had that terrible drop against Washington. We all have moments that we're human beings, okay? It was Washington? Yeah, yeah it was Washington. It was an Eagles game. It was Washington. E- Evan Ingram yeah. was Eagles. We, we got plenty of people who drop balls, don't worry. Um, sure. <laughs> but I, I really don't – I get he made maybe three or four really bad drops this season, but you always have – right, you know, you always improve. Devontae Adams, you consider him the best receiver in, in, the, in the NFL, right? Maybe top three at, at the worst. He had drop issues in the first few years of his career. He struggled with drops tremendously. So I think you got to give these guys time. And Darius Slayton, he's shown that he can be a productive NFL receiver. I don't understand the hate. He had a bad season. The whole team had a bad season. So can you really blame one guy for having a bad season when everyone had a bad season? It's kind of like, you know, if your whole company is down bad and you're, you're losing a whole bunch of money and one guy is really bad at his job, you're not like, oh, the whole reason is because this one guy. It's the whole company. So there's my analogy right there. Uh, Darius Slayton, he may have slacked off last year, but this year he's going to get back to work nine to five. All right. Um, I mean, with that, we can go to our tight ends. And normally it's three or four, or even two at some points, but three or four with the Giants. I think four is a normal number usually. Four, three or really? four. Really? Yeah, I think four. We, okay. Yeah. I think it could be two, honestly. Like, I think Where are you going to have two tight ends? What if one gets injured? <laughs> There's teams that run three tight ends. Practice sets. squad. What? Yeah, so that's what I was going to say. Uh, the Giants are very known to run three tight end sets or were known with their former coaching <laughs> Joe staff and head coach Joe Judge. <laughs> Loved his tight ends. Um, so right now, I believe in the 90-man roster, there are four uh, tight ends. We have three making the roster, all of them being there. Ricky Seals-Jones signed in free agency as well as Jordan Atkins or Atkins. Uh, I believe Atkins is from the Texans. Jones, ooh. I'm Washington. Say Jag- Washington. Washington. Okay. Filled in last season for Logan. Thomas. 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 Is that his name, the tight end? Yeah. Yeah, he's, so he's the starter there. He was out for a while, actually, with an injury. I forget. I want to say it was like hamstring. Uh, and he filled in for him for, I believe, six weeks, I want to say. I had him on my fantasy team. That's the only reason I know that information. But, yeah, Ricky Seals-Jones – was you know he filled in for him last year as a starter, so I think he could be Six games, a makeshift yeah. starter if you know Daniel Bellinger can't get off to a quick start, and I think that's probably likely considering he's a rookie. But anyway, you have that's a, our third guy. Oh yeah, they <laughs> <laughs> spoiled it. No, that's fine. It's whatever. It, that's our three: Ricky Seals, Jones, Daniel Bellinger, J- Jordan Atkins. All right, and now let's get to our offensive line. So this is the exciting Big part. One. We've got yeah. nine offensive linemen. So we've got three natural tackles. I'm going to go through them first. We got Andrew Thomas, Evan Neal, Matt Gano, or Matt Gano, however you want to say it. So those are our three natural tackles. And then the rest of the guys we have are natural interior guys, but I'm going to stop when I think, you know, some of them have tackle flexibility. So we got Mark Lewinsky, the big signing in free agency, really not that big, but big considering our uh, cap limitations. John Feliciano, another signing. Uh, Josh Azudu, who we saw in uh, OTAs, actually played left tackle when Andrew Thomas was out for a couple days. Uh, Shane Lemieux, don't think he has tackle flexibility. Max Garcia, uh, the pickup from the Cardinals that we picked up in free agency. And Jameel Douglas from the Bills. So I think Azudu kind of has that tackle flexibility. You hopefully have Corey Cunningham and uh, whatever, you know, some other guys at tackle on the practice squad. And uh, you also have Matt Parrott and Nick Gates on the PUP list coming into the season. So I think you got quite a bit of depth there at the offensive line, and hopefully they can figure it out. I would expect them to start slow, but I think eventually towards the end of the season, we'll see at least an average unit. Yeah, so like Alex was, was saying, you know, we actually think our stuff through. Where are these other guys going? He already mentioned Matt Perry and Nick Gates going to the PUP list probably. What about Marcus McKeith in the, I believe, fifth-round pick by the New York Giants this past year? He would most likely go on the practice squad. The Giants would most likely cut Corey Cunningham um, from last year. They also signed I don't even want to. Maybe, maybe put him on the practice squad, right, with Corey Cunningham. 
Why not? Corey Cunningham probably could, yeah. Yeah. Um, probably cut Ben Bredesen at that point. I know the trade on Lockheed it didn't oh go my our God, way. But I, is, uh, God, that trade haunts me. <laughs> cut our losses. Um, and then Roy and, and Batika and Betika, um, you know, part of the NFL international program. I'm sorry. I probably am not pronouncing his name right. Um, but we know he was brought in from OC Humanera. Another guy that if we really, if he's really good, I know he just started playing football only a couple of years ago. Um, if he is really good, I'm sure we can keep him out of the practice squad. I don't practice think squad really him, get him another year of football under his belt, and hopefully he's ready for us in 2024 <laughs> or 2023. Sorry, 23. Yeah, going really, really going zooming through. Yeah, yeah, zooming through. Trying to get to college as quick as possible. I guess. Yeah, huh? yeah I don't but, know what's going on. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so that's what we would do with the leftover guys at offensive line, and now go to D line. All right, defensive. All right, I can go. To- I'm doing defense. I'm, I'm rolling here. So defensive line, uh, we've got Dexter Lawrence. Uh, he'll kind of be one of our defensive ends slash nose. I know there's been talk about moving him to the nose. Tab. I don't. I don't really care too much to be honest. I know some people are more opinionated on it than I am. I think this defense we're not going to be set in stone, so I don't think it really matters who's the nose tackle per se. Uh, Leonard Williams. Jihad Ward, Jabari Ellis, and DJ Davidson, the fifth-round pick, I believe, from this past 2022 NFL draft. And those will be our defensive linemen. Uh, And I think we got a nice group, a mix of athleticism, a mix of size, a a mix of pass rush, run defense. Uh, I think altogether we uh, we have some versatility here on our defensive line. Not as strong as last year, but still some versatility. And with that being said, the guys who didn't make it, I think it's just a couple, like David Moa and Nico Lalos. Those guys could definitely go on the practice squad. I know Moa's a little bit older. I think he's 25. So, I don't Like know, Raymond Johnson could have been on here, but he was cut. So there's another guy who uh, is no longer okay. here. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. 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 So sad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know what else to say here. It's 53-man roster. you got to go from 90 to 53. It's super hard. Um, linebackers now. And for that, we have nine and all. But to, to make it easier for me, really, is what Alex is going to say just later. For, so just for well, Josh, yes. We might as well just say it now. We did, we, I, we, sep- we did it together. But for me, separate it to, to edge and linebackers. Uh, but, you know, in the grand scheme of things, how rosters are set up, uh, and they're announced 53 men rosters, especially it's just a linebacker section with all the guys. So we're going to start out with the edges though, and go from there. Um, starting out with our first pick in the NFL draft in the 2022 NFL draft, Kayvon Thibodeau followed up by our second round pick from last year, Aziz Ojolari, Quincy Roche, Ellerson Smith, and Tomon Fox. It's another one to keep your eyes out for um, in this training camp coming up. That's who we have making the roster at the edge position. Yeah, I mean, Fox, he had nine sacks last year for North Carolina, picked him up undrafted. I think there's a shot he makes this roster, and here we have him. Edge rusher, a position after the first two guys, maybe the first three guys after Quincy Roche, kind of weak uh, in a sense. I think we got decent depth here. Hopefully, Ellerson Smith progresses, but I really like this edge rushing group. I think Thibodeau, as a number one guy, hopefully he develops quickly uh, and can be that guy on the on the edge, Aziz Ojolari, I think, is going to be a great two. And Quincy Roche is a great rotational guy as well. And Ellerson Smith and Tomon Fox, if there's injuries, I think we'll be able to fill in quite well. So I'm. this is probably the room that I was most surprised about when I kind of, you know, you we know who's on the roster, right? But, like, when you actually get to visualize it, uh, when we write it down, it was, it was uh, exciting, I guess. So this one, on honestly, I feel like the most notable names of who's getting cut. So at this point, you would think Cam Brown, I th- I want to say sixth round pick in 2021, uh, and TJ Brunson, I want maybe seventh round pick. Was he Mr.? No, that was sick route of Mr. Relevant, right? Uh, TJ Brunson, sixth or seventh round pick, but they would both seventh, not be yeah. here. Yeah, They he would he both be getting there. cut so, or, or go to the practice squad. Carter Coughlin's a big one. He wouldn't be here. He would be getting cut in Justin Hilliard. I think they would all be getting cut. Yeah. And not make this. Uh, and then not make we the also team, have the linebackers, the, the interior guys, yep. too. So you want to get those? Sure. Linebackers, the, I would say, are they all the top two, like the most predictable? Blake Martinez, Tate Crowder, obvious. Uh, Blake Martinez coming off an injury. Last year, Tate Crowder stepped in for him, played 
pretty well uh, for the big role he was given and how late he was drafted. We just talked about it. Um, good, great job by him. So those are the top two. Then Micah McFadden, the new draft pick this past year. Same thing with Darian Beavers as well. So <laughs> that worked out, I guess. Yeah, I'm really excited for McFadden and Beavers. I'm excited to see what they can do. I think McFadden especially is going to fit nicely uh, in Wink's scheme. And I'm excited to see what those guys do. But only four inside linebackers this year. I know we had a whole bunch, uh, or at least linebackers in general last year. I believe we had like 10 or 11 or something like that uh, in the past. I know in the past couple of years. But uh, yeah, we're, sh- we're, sh- we're uh, shrinking down a bit at that position. And probably for good reason, because we have beefed up at the defensive back position, specifically the cornerback position. I know they come together here. We have 10 defensive backs in total, but we split it up into corners and safeties. Um, So I'll get to the cornerbacks first. So we actually took six cornerbacks this year uh, for the Giants. So we got a Dory Jackson, Aaron Robinson, Cordell Flott, Darnay Holmes, Radarius Williams, and Jaron Williams. Jaron Williams has been said to have been kind of working at safety and corner. So I think he was a really nice piece to kind of throw in here because we only have four safeties uh, to kind of have flexibility in case of injury and as a backup. But uh, obviously the main thing you see here is Aaron Robinson, Cordell Flott, Darnay Holmes are all thought to be slot guys, right? So three out of your six corners are slot guys. Usually when you're playing in the slot, you have two outside guys and one slot guy. So really it should be three guys on the outside or four guys on the outside, maybe two slot corners. But in this case, that is not so. Uh, so a little bit interesting there, but it could mean, uh, could mean that Flock goes on the outside if he can bulk up a bit. Aaron Robinson on the outside. Darnay Holmes, I think, has to stay in the slot. So uh, you do have flexibility there, but those are our corners for the 53-man roster. I think this is the position where we don't have a lot of strength, so we need a lot of depth. And now behind the guaranteed two at safety, behind Xavier McKinney and Julian Love, we have Dane Belton and Yusuf Corker. Already, it's been so early, but ever since I think rookie minicamp, Yusuf Corker has been coming up on lists and in tweets and in videos and in podcasts and in whatever you want to call it uh, when it comes to Giants news um, and Giants rumors and Giants signings, whatever. Two, uh, I think two undrafted free agents here for us. So that's something to keep in mind. Sure. And it could have been three if we added Corbin in at running back, but I think they're going to go with Brightwell instead. Yeah, it could very well be the case. But I think Corker, it's just like his name comes up too often to be ignored. Um, and that is why he is our final safety there. So four safeties, six cornerbacks, 10 in all. Said it about three times. You hear it a fourth now. Special teams, the normal three. Not going anything crazy here. Um, no Joe Judge left with us. Graham Gano at kicker. A little bit different with the punter situation. It's not Riley Dixon anymore. It's going to be Jamie Gillen, um, which we haven't heard the best about either. It's not the, not the, I mean, not saying like, oh, punter signings, whoa, but, <laughs> you know, he, he wasn't, I don't know. Can't He's be much right. worse than last year. <laughs> True. Um, and then Casey Kreider, normal long snapper, works well with Gano. Why change it? Uh, so that is our three special teamers, and that's going to conclude our 53-man roster. 53-man uh, roster post-OTAs. So. Yay. <laughs> Exciting. <laughs>